normal spot. So um, we're going to jump right from the epistle reading until our, our sermon hymn. Psalm thing, I'll talk about that. Does everyone have a bulletin? All right, and palm branches. You need palm branches. It's the one day you get to whack your neighbor with palms. So you've got to get your palm branches. Reflecting his life, there's a lot of stuff in here today for you. Um, it is Holy Week. We've got Monday, Thursday service at 7 o'clock. Good Friday at uh, 7 o'clock on Friday. And, of course, next week, Easter. And we have special treats for all the little guys. All right, all the little ones. So make sure you bring the little ones on Easter. Today's the last day for Easter plants. April 10th, last day for Easter plants. No Bible study this week for Holy Week, and no Sunday school next week. All right, we'll bring all those back the following week. Uh, today, sort of a, a big item is that for communion, we're not going to be using the little dispenser anymore today. Okay, we're going to be using the actual ciborium. It has a cool name, right? <laughs> the ciborium. So I'm going to wash my hands really good. All right, I'll try not to cough on them, but uh, I'll wash my hands good. And uh, we'll, we'll do it like we used to, all right? Uh, we'll still do a continuous line uh, for communion, but the, the host distribution will just be a little different this morning. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand this over. Oh, no, I'm sorry. we got to start this service. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem, with palms in their hands, gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite the children to come forward here as we process in. All right. Oh, yeah. Check these things out. You're going to be behind me in front of me for now. Yeah, all right. Here we go. We're, we're going to process in. Uh, to this song called Victory Chant. And it's very easy. All you have to do is repeat after me. Call and response. Okay, call and response. Um, I'm going to teach it to you real quick. First verse, all right? It goes like this. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. I will praise you all my days. just keeps going like that, okay? Call and response. Get your palm branches going. It's time to process in. Here we go. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life. Going in now. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect. Oh, Jesus, you're my Lord. Oh, Jesus, you're my Lord. 
take me into the land. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All hail to Jesus, the King of our lives. Lift up your hearts and rejoice in him. But God raised him up that the ends of the earth may bow before him as their king. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. In him is forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Have mercy on us, Lord. Bless us with your peace. Hosanna, Hosanna. Let us now make confession of our sins to God, our gracious Heavenly Father. Eternal God, we confess that we were born sinful and have continued to sin in thought, word, and deed. O God, in your mercy, forgive our sin and renew your spirit within us, that we may joyfully follow your will and gladly obey your commandments. For the sake of Jesus our Lord, forgive our sins and direct us in ways of compassion and love. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.
Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sunday is Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. We have a division of one and twos will have the ones be the pulpit side, the left side, and twos will be the right side, left hand side. We begin together. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us and pray, O Lord. O Lord, be prayer, be with us. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. salvation. 
Uh, remember that psalm that Jesus quoted last week in our gospel text, Psalm 118? It was our psalm actually appointed for today. Uh, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. In verse 25 of that psalm, uh, I believe it was the, the right side that uh, recited that, there is a cry for salvation. He said, save us, we pray, O Lord. That word meaning save us is Hosanna. Save us, Lord, we pray. So the crowd was crying out for salvation that day, but Salvation from what? Well, from their enemies. Well, who are their enemies? Well, in their minds, it was the Romans. They had been crying out for a king to save them from Roman rule and reestablish Israel as a great nation. And it's no wonder they thought that Jesus was that guy, that he was going to be that king. He had healed many. He had fed thousands with his miracles, and just before riding into Jerusalem, he even raised someone from the dead. They know that. They bear witness to that. They're crying out for Jesus to save them, but, of course, they're looking for an earthly king to save them from the Romans. And yes, Jesus is and will be their king, but he's not the king that they're looking for. He is the king that they and you and I need. We've been studying the book of Judges in Bible study, and we just have a few more chapters to go. Up until about the last five chapters here, um, we've observed a recurring life, uh, recurring cycle, excuse me, the life of God's people. Uh, first, they, they play the harlot, that's the nice way to say it, but with other gods and with other religions. And they forsake the one true God, and they forget him. They forget his works, reject his care, his provision. Um, and God would then sell them into the hands of another nation, who would rule over them and oppress them. And then they would cry out to God for salvation, for help, restore us, save us from our oppressors. God, in his mercy, would raise up a judge, a deliverer, who would rescue them from their enemies. Well, the cycle would just be put on repeat um, as a time of peace would lead to forgetting the Lord again and all that he had done for them, rejecting his love and provision and playing the harlot, once again following after other gods of the nations. Well, eventually you come to Samuel, and Samuel is the last judge of Israel, and now the people demand to be like all the other nations around them. It wasn't just their gods. They already went after them. We've seen that. But how did they want to be like them? Now, with Samuel, as they have in the past, though, they cry out and demand a king. They said, there shall be a king over us, that we also may be like the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us and fight our battles. We're done getting ruled over. <laughs> We're done having nations come in and take us over and oppress us. So we need a king, and that's going to stop it. You know, personal responsibility aside, the king is going to fight our battles for us. So Samuel prays to God, and he responded, Obey the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. According to all the deeds that they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are also doing to you. Now then, obey their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. And Samuel did warn them according to the word of the Lord. You want a king so bad, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to go well for you. It's going to cost you greatly. And at the end, you're going to cry out to God again because of how much you're suffering from the king that you demanded. But of course, as you could have guessed, they did not listen. They said, nope, we want that king who will go out before us and fight our battles for us. And God gave them their kings. But as he warned them, it didn't go well for them. So by the time that Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, Hosanna, uh, 
was not a new word in the vocabulary of God's people. After the dynasty of the house of David, they were ruled by the Persians, Alexander the Great, the Ptolemies, the Seleucids, and now the Romans. And this remnant of Israel still cried out for a king to fight their battles for them and save them from their enemies, the Romans. They are blind, they are ignorant, and rebellious. But before we start pointing fingers and shaking our heads, let's let their foolishness remind us that we're not so different. Unless, of course, you've never rebelliously acted against God's word for your life. But you have, haven't you? I know I have. And we're all guilty of ignorantly shaping the king to suit our own thoughts and desires. And I wonder, as you hear about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem once again, you wave your palm branches and sing the familiar Palm Sunday hymns, what kind of king are you expecting? Well, I'll tell you what. And this is the wonder and the power and the mercy of our God on display. It doesn't matter what kind of king you're expecting. Because God didn't wait for you or for his people to know what they needed before he sent his son. The people didn't know that they were asking for uh, the wrong kind of king. And sometimes we don't either. But despite all of humanity's blind ignorance, despite all of their rejection of him as their king, he still sends his son to be our king. We might even say it this way, as we've said in our midweek Lenten services. We meant it for evil, but God meant it. I said, but God meant it for good. Who is this king who rides into Jerusalem? He's the king that we need. And check this out. Jesus is the true king who came to do what Israel had asked for in the first place. Dear friends, he is the king who goes before us, who's willing to go out in front of his people and fight their battles for them. Isn't that what they asked for? Only they meant a king who would save them from an oppressive nation. But Jesus did not come to establish his reign against the kingdoms of this world. His kingdom is not of this world, and all authority on heaven and earth belongs to him. He has come to establish an everlasting kingdom, and he will do that, not with a great army, not with chariots and horses, not with power and force, but with humility, with love, with weakness, with pain and suffering, even death on a cross. God's plan all along was to save blind, ignorant, rebellious sinners through the death of his son. Our gospel text says that his disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. It's always God's plan. And these things that happened to him are, again, from our midweek Latin services, evil things. Evil has come against Jesus. And the Gospel of Luke, especially as we've been studying, has helped us to see that evil comes as one force, one voice against Jesus. And the amazing part of God's plan of salvation for you and for me was not to stop the evil, but to let evil do its worst to his son. And it did. All evil, the real evil, enemy. All evil, all sin, all idolatry, all rebellion and rejection, all unbelief, all blind and ignorance, all suffering and pain, all the evil of the evil one and death itself, even all of God's just and righteous wrath on sin, all of it was placed on Jesus and it was all swallowed up in his body and put to death in his death. And so you know what that means, friends? If it was all placed on Jesus, there's nothing left for you. Jesus took it all so that he could take it all away. If Jesus has taken it all, there's nothing 
left for you. Evil, evil can't have you. Evil can do nothing to you. No one, no sin, no nothing can rip you away from God's hands. There is no condemnation for any sin, any sin of yours, because all of it was empty on Jesus. There's no wrath left. There's no condemnation left for you. The evil one has no grounds, no claims, no power, and death, your death, is swallowed up in victory. This king is what we need. Jesus is the true king. And a true king represents his people. In the ancient world, the king was effectively seen as the people. What happened to him happened to the people. When Jesus came and took on human flesh and blood, he did not just become a human being, but rather the human being, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer puts it. By the way, cool note, today is uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's like, saint day, too, as well. So there's a little something. Uh, seems fitting to quote him today. He said, whatever happens to him happens to human beings as such. It happens to everyone and thus also to us. He's simply saying what the Bible has said in Romans chapter 6, for example, that when we're baptized into Christ, we're connected to his death, his life, his resurrection. We are hidden with Christ. We become a new person. What happens to him happens to us. And what a beautiful picture, right, in baptism, when we have uh, a child being placed into Christ in baptism, right, unbeknownst to the child, God is doing something. He is saving them apart from their choice, apart from their demands, apart from their will, apart from their power. He's doing the verbs, as we like to say. God's people had rejected him. And he wasn't about to wait around to make sure they got it together, make sure they got their act together before he would act. He sends his son to be the king. And he is our king. Think of it like uh, the first commandment. First commandment, you shall have. Oh, but we do, don't we? <laughs> we fall into all kinds of idolatry cool thing about what God does in and through his son. It's as if he takes that command and turns it into a promise. In the death of his son, he gets rid of all other gods, because no other gods can save. He saves us by virtue of his actions on our behalf. We will have no other gods. Because of what Jesus did, Revelation 21 comes true. We will be in the presence of our God, and he will be our God, our only God, and we will be his people. Jesus rode into Jerusalem knowing the real enemies that needed to be defeated. God took the evil that we and the people were doing and deserved, and he put it all on him, Jesus. He took it all so he could take it all away. Our king went before us into death and fought our battles for us, and he won. That's what Easter is all about. He won. His victory is your victory and my victory. Friends, it's Holy Week. What are we going to do this week? Psalm 46, verse 10, I think, puts it really nicely because there's battle imagery. And we're talking about Jesus going in to Jerusalem to fight our battles for us. Psalm 46, verse 10 puts it like this. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Our God is full of love, full of forgiveness. And we're going to see that on full display this week. So my encouragement to you, of course, is to come to the services as you are Able. Come and hear Monday, Thursday, coming up in just a few days. We get to hear again how King Jesus gives us this gracious gift of his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Not only do we get to hear that, but we get to receive it as we're going to today. Receive and eat his body and blood for our forgiveness. The next day we gather on Good Friday and we are quite literally still. That's all we can do. 
Jesus is the one doing the actions. He's the one dying in our place. All we can do is be still as we marvel in awe that King Jesus is our God. King Jesus suffered and was nailed to a cross for us. King Jesus took care of everything for us. We rest. We are still in the, it is finished. The victory has been won for you. And dear friends, Easter is coming. And together we will rejoice in defeat of death. The defeat of our real enemies. And rejoice in the promise of the resurrection on the day of our Lord's return. So may God bless our Holy Week observances and strengthen our faith once again by his promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church as it observes this Holy Week around the world. Let all people come to see in Christ alone, the Redeemer of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all nations, that conflict cease, and that the kingdom of God come to bless our world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we anticipate the celebration of Holy Week and Easter, we pray for our families and the people closest to us. Grant that we share with them our faith in Christ and live together as God's sanctified and thankful people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those with special needs and concerns this day, especially the hospitalized, the grieving, the unemployed, and all those whose special situations are on our hearts at this time, and for whom our petitions are desired, including for Jane Wicks, Allison, Chris Turner, Barbara Stanisic, Donald Wicks Jr., Greg and Karen Lucas, Anita Heaton, Dick Robbins, Mike Brody, Johnny Lisney, Kelvin Tom, Erica Brody, David Anton, Carol Roach, Marilyn Stone, Charlie Stone, Paul Albertson, Rocco Campanelli, Kevin and Leah Franciati, John Matern, Michael Crass, Matthew DeSirico, Lisa, Chris, Olivia, Abigail Hope, Lisa, Scott, and Lena, everyone suffering from the attacks in Ukraine, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, as this holiest week of the church year begins, Lord, we remember before you those many faithful Christian people who have been part of our lives and our fellowship in times past. Especially those who have departed this life and now are rejoicing in the glory of your promised heavenly kingdom. Direct our ways on earth that we may complete this life in faith and may at last sing eternal hosannas together with them and all the company of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the offering.
Please stand. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
And now may this true body and this true blood strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith, now and for life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. day by day and keep us filled with hope as we await your eternal kingdom where you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we receive the blessing of our Lord, we place our hands out in front of us like a cup. Remind us everything we have is a gift from God. Come with nothing to give, nothing to offer, and everything to receive. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And we continue with our closing hymn as we look forward to the events of this week. Amen.